Shady Pelican is not a large channel, but we are a proud one, and each subscriber fights with the strength of ten main channelers. And we know no king, but the king in the north, whose name is Star Gigarian. This is the Shady Pelican Show. I didn't want to do a regular review show, especially since it's been so long since the last episode's been on. So I'm introducing a new segment. It's called Products and Predictions. Five predictions for the next season of Game of Thrones, as well as five products I think could be found somewhere in Westeros. But before all that, I'd like to remind everyone of all the predictions I got right last season. Jon Snow was brought back by Melisandre, Hurricane Cersei, Nymeria is still alive, which is significant now that Nymeria and Ghost are the last remaining direwolves, Sansa and Brienne go to Castle Black, Arya is the blind samurai, Cersei demands a trial by combat, the Clegane Bowl will not happen, but that was mainly because I thought the Hound was dead, um, R plus L equals J, and the Knights of the Vale save the day at the Battle of Helm's Deep. Uh, I mean, Winterfell. However, I didn't get everything right. The following things I actually got wrong. Everybody satisfied? Good. Now here are my predictions for Season 7. Na, 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 na. I had such hopes for a Lady Stoneheart appearance, but it doesn't look like that's going to happen. Uh, and then I started to think they might be pushing Arya in that direction instead, uh, especially with the death of Walder Frey. Um, plus, Arya meeting up with the Brotherhood Without Banners would allow a reunion with the Hound. Uh, Beric Dunder Mifflin, or whatever the hell his name is, uh, is on Arya's list, and he's dead in the books, so if Arya took over the Brotherhood instead of Lady Stoneheart, that would kind of tie that knot off quite nicely. However, upon further analysis, I don't think that this is likely. Uh, Arya is one of the most dangerous people in Westeros right now, and quite frankly, she doesn't really need the Brotherhood. Uh, plus, it shouldn't take long for her to get the news that Jon Snow is the King of the North, and that Sansa is with him at Winterfell. And she would be of much greater use to them than she would the Brotherhood. Uh, a girl is Arya Stark, and she's going home. Fortune favors the bold, so I'm going to say that Arya Stark will kill the mountain next season. Uh, essentially because she's the last one you'd expect. Uh, beyond that, I've got a really bad feeling about Arya. Uh, there's two more seasons left, and I don't feel like George R. R. Martin is done killing Starks yet. And with Jon being the prince that was promised, and Bran being the three-eyed raven... I think they are relatively safe for the time being. That just leaves Sansa and Arya. Sansa is perhaps the safest she's been since the show started. Even with Littlefinger lurking about, most of his scheming involves her somehow. Uh, I also see her as being an integral part of uniting Jon Snow and Daenerys Targaryen together, especially since her first husband is now Hand of the Queen. Uh, Tyrion treating her well in the past is finally going to pay its dividends. Arya's deadly, but she still makes mistakes. And she's going to be putting herself in much more dangerous situations this next season. So for that reason, I think she is the most likely Stark that's going to die. Hello, friends. I'm Jaehaerys Targaryen. But you probably know me as Jon Snow. A lot of people say that I know nothing. But I'm here to tell you that growing up with two sister cousins, I do know something about feminine protection. I also know about White Walkers. And that's why I'm here to tell you about White Walker tampons. Super absorbent and made with real direwolf hair. White Walker tampons offer six levels of comfort and softness. Whether you're a Summer, a Nymeria, 
or a shaggy dog. There's a White Walker tampon that's right for you. You can trust White Walker for ultimate protection, White Walker. Because you don't want your wedding to become a red wedding. Na 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 Jon Snow is a Targaryen. So what? Uh, the only person who knows it right now is Bran. And it's going to take a lot more than his word to convince anybody. Uh, current theories on how Jon Snow's identity is going to be actually revealed <coughs> range from him discovering his tomb under Winterfell uh, in a hidden area of the crypt that has his real name and lineage on it from finding Rhaegar's harp, uh, both of which I think are possible, but um, I think it would be about as convincing as the little piece of paper that Robert Baratheon wrote to Ned Stark, naming him the Steward of the Seven Kingdoms. Then there's Howland Reed, who accompanied Ned Stark to the Tower of Joy, who in all likelihood does know Jon Snow's secret lineage. Um, He's also the father of Mira and Jojen Reed, uh, who accompanied Bran to the Three-Eyed Raven. Uh, the problem is, nobody has seen Howland Reed, and he lives in a castle that appears and disappears like it's fucking Brigadoon. Um, finally, there's good old Samwise Gamgee. Crazy little hobbitses! They stole it from us! <laughs> I mean Samwell Tarly. <laughs> uh, he's at Hogwarts. I mean, I mean the Citadel uh, for a reason. And with two seasons left, uh, he's going to have to shit or get off the pot. My guess is he finds a book that reveals everything, and maybe he finds the secrets of Valerian Steel as well. I think it's possible that all of this actually happens. Uh, John can discover the crypt, which gets the idea into his head, and then when Bran comes back from the wall and and they are reunited, the two of them say, well, how do we prove this? And then Mira pops up and is like, my father! And then she also probably knows how to find Greywater Watch, where they will speak friend and enter, and then Sam will meet up with John at some point uh, with his little book that's all the maesters swear to that says he's a Targaryen and blah, blah, blah. And that will finally pave the way uh, for John to finally hook up with his aunt. Uh, which is, of course, what we all want to happen. R r right? <laughs> uh, I mean, it was... It was either that or or winter is blood, and that just didn't seem to have the same ring to it. Sorry. <laughs> From the award-winning author who brought you Wine Time and Twinning comes an explosive new novel by Cersei Lannister, Scorched Earth. Because fuck you. Winner of the King's Landing Golden Chalice Award for Literary Excellence. And best new novel by Queen or Queen Regent. Critics are already raving. It's the best and single most important piece of literature in the history of Westeros. I have not been coerced or threatened into saying that either. It's totally what I think and the safety of my family thinks. I mean, majority of my family. No, no, unanimously. That is unanimously what my family thinks. All of them. I swear it by the old gods and the new. Order now, and we'll throw in a free copy of King Tommen and the No Good, Very Bad Day. Absolutely free. And if you act right now, you can also reserve your copy of Cersei's upcoming novel, Fuck Your Dragons, Bitch for over 50% off the retail price. Simply use the code word Shady Pelican upon checkout. Order now, or pay later. It's up to you. 
Na, 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 na. As it stands right now, I feel like Daenerys could pretty much steamroll everybody in the Seven Kingdoms. Um, but I'm pretty sure that's not going to happen. And I'm also pretty sure that Euron Greyjoy will be the main reason. Now, Danny will ultimately be victorious, um, but she will be weakened to the point that she's going to need her nephew's help in order to conquer the Seven Kingdoms, uh, and ultimately the White Walkers. Euron is an experienced sailor, and he is going to wreak havoc on Danny's mostly unexperienced fleet. It's all been set up in the imagery. Euron declared, I am the storm, the first and the last. And Danny is, of course, stormborn, so she's going to survive. Um, I mean, she's one of the heads of Azora High as well, so of course she survives, but it's not going to be easy. I also think that it'll help that Khal Drogo has apparently become the Drowned God. Uh, otherwise, I mean, why else would they have released this? What? I thought the guy from Entourage was playing Aquaman. Well, yeah, I guess it'll be more watchable this way. <laughs> as, as long as they don't fuck it up like they did Batman vs. Superman and Suicide Squad. Uh, okay, so forgive my tangent here, but I really didn't think Batman vs. Superman was all that bad. That being said, the extended version is the one that should have been released in theaters. Uh, it patches a lot of the holes that are in the theatrical release. Uh, then there's the Suicide Squad. Uh, I thought it was okay, uh, but to me the impression the film gave me was that when they got done filming it, they had a three-hour movie, and then they just shit their britches and needed to hack and slash it down to two hours, um, which made it kind of choppy and clunky. The extended DVD release of the Suicide Squad will be significantly better than the theatrical release. Hopefully they will not shit their britches over Wonder Woman and the Justice League, and the Harley Quinn movie that follows will be the best of the sequence. Here's hoping. And how about a Spider-Gwen movie, for fuck's sakes? Alright, enough about that. But to segue back into Game of Thrones, consider this for a moment. The last two episodes of season six cost $10 million each, giving a total cost of $20 million for around a two-hour product. Now, in contrast, Batman vs. Superman cost $250 million, and Suicide Squad cost $175 million, both of which are around two-hour products. I think uh, Suicide Squad's a little over two hours, uh, Batman vs. Superman is closer to two and a half, but um, still have to ask, how does Game of Thrones manage to do so much with so little, and meanwhile, the movies I mentioned, do so little with so much? Euron will buddy up with Queen Cersei so that he can load his ships full of wildfire and rain holy hell down upon Danny's fleet. Uh, ultimately, I think he's going to be stopped by either Theon or Yara, and two out of those three Greyjoys are going to die as a result of it. Uh, if I had to guess, I would probably say it'll be Euron and Theon. Yara will make it through. This edition of the Shady Pelican Show is brought to you in part by Hot Pies Famous, the best sausage man has to offer. Hot Pies Famous, available in Sausage Theons, Varus Dogs, and Unsullied Bratwurst. Hot Pies Famous, the sausage king of Westeros, for oral consumption only. Na, 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 na. The fact that Bran can essentially time travel opens up a myriad of things that could happen with him. Uh, he is obviously the key to defeating the White Walkers, but how he does that so far is uh, kind of a mystery. He could be the current incarnation of Bran the Builder, uh, he could still warg into a dragon, potentially. <clears throat> he could still be the third head of the dragon uh, in terms of Azor High. 
uh, which I believe Danny and Jon Snow are the first two. Um, and there's also, is Bran the one who drove the Mad King mad? I think that Bran will discover whatever Sam doesn't, uh, and vice versa. The war between the living and the dead is going to be coming soon, and for that reason as well, I also expect the wall to come down. Closed captioning and other considerations for the Shady Pelican Show may one day be provided by Little Finger Candy Bars. I'd give anything to have just one more little finger. Available at fine retailers everywhere. Na, 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 na. The thing about Cersei that keeps rolling around in my head is that I feel like she set up Tom and suicide. And I actually think there's a lot of evidence to support this. Uh, first off, you have Cersei's prophecy that she would have three children, they all would die, and that she would get to sit on the Iron Throne. Now, even though this has been in Cersei's head for a while, um, I don't really think she believed it so much um, until Marcella died. And if you just look at how she reacts towards Tommen after that, she is very distant. Um, like she knew that she was going to lose him at this point and wanted to soften the blow for herself um, when it actually happened. Once Tommen unites with the Faith, Cersei kind of discovers not only how much Tommen loves Marjorie, but also that there is no bringing him back at this point. He is lost to the Faith. Um, the final straw is delivered, of course, when Tommen outlaws trial by combat. And after that, I think Cersei was just like, you're dead to me. This is probably when you'll say, but wait a second, Cersei stopped Tommen from going to the trial. She did it to protect him. Yes, she did, but she wasn't protecting him. If he would have attended the trial, then Cersei would have just been a Kingslayer, just like her brother. Instead, Cersei keeps him in a room where he can watch everything happen and know who is precisely responsible for it. And if your mother just blew up your wife, as well as several hundred innocent people, I mean, what else are you really going to do? When Cersei gets the news of her King's Landing, uh, she is neither upset nor surprised. Probably because every part of her prophecy has come true to this point. Which also means that she's going to be replaced by someone younger and prettier than she is. Odds are that's going to be Daenerys at this point. Now that Marjorie's gone. Ah, Marjorie. also means that Cersei will be killed by the Valonqar. But who is the Valonqar? It means little brother in Valyrian, so that narrows it down to Tyrion, and I also think you can throw Jaime into that pile since he was the latter-born twin. And I also think uh, Arya should be in that discussion as well since she is, after all, a face-changing assassin. It'll be Jamie that kills her, and he'll do it for the same reasons that she killed Tommen, because she would rather see him dead than to see what he's become. Now, if Jamie should get whacked before that happens, uh, Cersei's going to kill herself. We learned that much when Stannis Baratheon uh, drove his fleet into Blackwater Bay. She had the vial of poison at the ready, just in case. Uh, so... I really think that uh, if the shit starts to close in on her, she's just going to down the poison and she'll be gone. She'll never be taken alive. So since this is the first episode of the second season of Shady Pelican Show, I wanted to do a callback to the first episode where I designed my very first product for Westeros, which was none other than Franken Mountain cereal. Franken Mountain. Artificially refined Gregor Clegane, flavored with crushed bits of Oberyn Martell, official champion of Cersei Lannister. Fire bad! Oh, wait, that would be the Frankenhound, wouldn't it? <laughs> Those are my thoughts going into Season 7. What are yours? Leave a comment below. Also, make sure you subscribe, uh, because in a future edition of The Shady Pelican Show, 
I will be giving away uh, the Life is Strange Limited Edition um, for Xbox. I'm going to be doing a show on Life is Strange. It's one of my favorite video games. <clears throat> so I figured I would give away a copy of it to one lucky subscriber. And right now I only have six, so your chances of winning are actually pretty good. Also be sure to visit the all-new ShadyPelican.com. You can even support me on Patreon at patreon.com backslash ShadyPelican. Thanks so much for watching. Hope to see you next time. I'm Robert Riverwood, and you stay classy, San Diego. They shit their britches.